Hi, hello everyone. I'm the tutor of you bloods. This is react JS session part two to know more about us. Please use this website address, which I have given in my presentation. So let's see the agenda of our today's session. So today we are going to discuss about more uh, in detail about props and what is props, how to use a props in react JS and the state uh, why state and if we change the state what are the things we happen uh, so that uh, in more about details so in my last session i have just give you the introduction about state and props but in this session i'm just going to show you state and props with live examples so next would be uh, how to click <coughs> sorry how to create a component nesting components and component states dynamic user interface and how what are the variation of stateless function components and how to use so if the set state will false the set state is one of the method in state that you will get understand when we complete a state in this particular session so let's enter into a session so what are props so props is a uh, short for properties and they are used to pass the data between react components between which means it will pass the data of values from one component to other components so that is what the props will do actually so the react data uh, will flows in unidirectional which means from parent to child only it can flow data so in that how where the props will act so the props will be in the child component only so it will flow from uh, parent to child it is a unidirectional that is how the react data is flowing so it is one of the important interview questions how the data flow will be it will be in the unidirectional so how do you pass data how can we pass data so you just see this example i'm just extending my parent components to components so it is like object in javascript object class so that is like component here so what i'm going to do i'm just returning child component name first child so uh, this child component i have created below so child component props that child components is a props and just returning props dot name which means what is the child component name i have given here first child so that thing will be written in the above code so th this is the actual way of only using a props in parent component there is also another way uh, if this is a parent component i can set a state so that that particular state variable i can use in some other component as a prop so i will show that you in uh, upcoming session so this is how you need to use a props in parent component so the code explanation i have given here so first we need to define or get some data from the parent component and then we need to assign that to the child's component props attribute props attribute here will be the name so i am just uh, getting some data from parent component assigning to the props attribute so this is the value i am just getting from parent and then assigning to the props attribute first check so name is defined a prop here so the which contains some data so what i am going to do i am just going to pass the data with props like giving argument to the function so that is what i have done here as a arrow function so and finally the props will render the data so i'm just returning props dot name i'm just getting the data so this is how you need to do first thing you need to get some data from the parent and then assign that to the child props attribute after that we need to pass the data uh, to the props like a argument in a function so i just created an arrow function and just passing and then i'm just returning the 
props data whatever i pops so props dot name that by that way only i can get the data from the parent component to a child so this is how the unidirectional data is flowing so next is what is state so the react has another special built in object called state so what it will do so it will allow the component to create and manage their own data so unlike props component cannot pass data with child but they can create and manage so what the props will do it will flows the data from parent to child but the state it will create the data in the same component and then it will manage the data i will show you the example here so this is my parent component class test extends component so uh, the one thing you need to keep in mind while creating a state you need to create inside the constructor only like this so this dot state so inside that i have two attribute id and name with the key value per so uh, i have created a state so now i am going to return on that same component so this dot state dot id means i will get one this dot state dot name i will get the name test so this is how you need to create a state and manage with that same component so second thing if you want to use this id and name in some other component then that should be the props how will you get you need to first import this class in that particular component once imported completed then you can use like this dot props dot id in that child component then you will get the value so this is how the state and props are playing a role in java in react js so how can we update the state component the props you cannot update the props is read only but the state you can update you can set whatever you want you can do so the state cannot modify directly but it has some special method called set state so this dot state dot id equal to 2020 you cannot update this so this would be wrong so i need to use that special method this dot set state this is a method since i'm just opening and closing id 2020 so this would be the correct thing so next is what happens when the state changes so a change in state may happen based on the user input only it will get changed right so the react component will also render based on the data change in that state so it will hold the initial information so when the state changes react gets informs data immediately and then what it will do it will re-render the dom so not the whole dom only the component where it updated the state so that only will get updated so that is why we are telling react js is so fast so if you want to if something had state we had made some changes in state it will re-render that particular dom alone and then it will reflect the information which you have updated the state with the help of that set state method so this is why react is so fast and how that get notified so we can see with the set state we are changing so the set state method triggers the re-render process for updated parts so that react will get uh, informed with the help of that re-rendering process and it will change does not quickly it will re-render the whole dom so the so there are some life cycle methods in react as well as to happen this re-rendering or updating that we will discuss in a 
upcoming session then you will get more idea how it is getting notified how it is getting re-render also so there are two points we need to keep in mind when coming with state so one is that cannot be modified directly so this dot state dot id you cannot give some value and then you cannot ask the real dom to get modified that is absolutely wrong so you need to use the special method called set state so this dot set state is a method you need to update your value with the key inside that method only so the state affects the performance of your app and therefore it should not be unnecessarily so can i use a state in every component that uh, yeah so but in uh, when react js emerge earlier days the state can use only in the class component not in functional component which is the child component so they are with functional component they will always call a stateless component so this is the reason they are calling like that so when after react hooks introduced we can use the state both in class as well as functional so this is one of the important question so uh, when they uh, use the state in functional component only introducing after the react hooks they are used so can state can i use state in every component this is the question the interviewer may ask you so at that time you need to say so but in earlier days they are not using the state in functional component so that's why functional component are called this stateless component but after introducing this react hook state are used in both class as well as functional component so if in your project you're not using react hook means then you need to use a state only in class component i will tell you what is react hook in the upcoming sessions so what is the main difference between state and props we can see so components receive data from outside with props where they can create and manage their own data with state so props are to pass data where states are to manage the data so that is the main difference between them whereas props already i have said you it is read only cannot modify it. so state can modify its by its own in the own component but it cannot access from outside it is a private data so props can pass from parent to child that is unidirectional always so modifying the state it can only happen with a special method called set state so these are the some of the difference between state and props the main difference is state can modify within its own component and it is a private whereas props is read only cannot modify and this props can pass from parent to child it is unidirectional stage uh, modifying should happen with the set state method so next is hello world so it is like simple program getting into react without jsx so what is jsx already i have shown you so that javascript is embedded within the html with the curly braces so that is the term we can call as jsx so without jsx i have just show you the hello world program so inside html i have a uh, html head i have given the title so this you all familiar if you have uh, seen my html session so the thing i am just uh, import the libraries for our need for the react js so inside the div inside script tag i just created a react element react dot with the help of create element method i have just created so after that uh, i need to use that dom container right so i am just getting the element by id with this this is the element 
from this, I need to get the data so that I'm just getting the D element. After that, I need to render the React element into the DOM so that I'm just rendering both the elements, R elements and then D elements. So R elements is a React element which I have created. And to render DOM, I need to create the element that is the D element. So for understanding, I have kept the name like this. So when you run the program, you will get hello world. So this is without JSX. So with JSX, the same example, how I can do. So instead of creating the React element from strings, we can use the JSX. So you can see here, so the above statement, which is the React element I have created is equivalent to like this. So R element H1, this is so simple, right? Instead of writing react.create element, I can use the JSX. So the code containing JSX enclosed in the script, which is, which is understood is equivalent to that. So next, everything in a plain JavaScript. So this Babel will come here. It will convert that into a understandable language. So finally, the above example will become like this. So the same ID, script tag. I am just using uh, JSX to create a React element. So the DOM, the same thing, get element by ID. So our element, comma, ring, I'm just rendering DOM. I will get hello world. So this is how with JSX and without JSX example. So which is easier with JSX? Because uh, it is so simple, right? Just you need to embed your HTML inside JavaScript. So next is hello world component. So uh, the React component can define an ESX classes that extends the base component. So base component is what? React that component class that would be the base component. So in its minimum form, a component must define a re-rendered method that specifies how component rendered to the DOM. So the render method will return React nodes, which can define using JSX syntax as HTML tags. So this is like, uh, you can see here, Sorry, the render method is returning React nodes. That, that is what render, which is returning the React nodes. That is what I'm just saying. So import React from React class hello world. It will extends React dot component. So I am just rendering that React component so that I'm returning the hello world, which is a JSX element. So I'm just exporting the default hello world inside that React component. So this is a simple hello world using pure React. So a component can also receive a props. In order what we need to do, we need to get the properties by its parent and then you need to mention the value that we cannot do here. So uh, what I have done, so this dot props dot name, you can see here this dot props dot name. So you can, you, the explanation for this, which I have already told you, it should be the state in some component and then you can, you need to import that and then you can use, I have to, but this is a reverse process for, of that, how they are using a property uh, will contain a function that can call by the component after that. So when a button receives a function on click, whenever you cl on click, it can call. So when writing, the props can access through the props object on the component itself. So on, when, once an event occurred, the prop will get tri triggered. So like this also you can use. So I'm just rendering. 
this dot props dot name i'm just exporting default so the above example shows how the component is rendering passing string passed into the name prop by its parrot so the component can render without within any other component directly using react dom dot render both the component dom you can render so like this also you can do so react comma react dom from react dom so that both are same so that is what i have explained here so both are same you can see i'm just importing that hello from the hello it is in same folder so this is the component component name and then file name so you can see react dom dot render hello name is billy james i am just getting that id so now what will be my output i am just rendering the name so it will go there this dot props dot name it will print there hello billy games that would be the output so you know how to make a basic component and accept props so that is what the basic component i'm just accepting a props in that particular component so let's we can make a hello world app display only first name if a full name is given so you can see here i am just like hello extend react component is a parent component so this is like a constructor super everything is default so inside that constructor first name so this dot props dot name splitting that so a full name is there now it will split and it will give only the first name i'm just setting inside my state this dot name uh, name first name so that uh, it will pass the name inside that so this is how you can make so in some other when you render you can pass that uh, name and then it will split and then it will pass into the state and then it will print so how uh, the remaining program i will say so react uh, it react dom dot render you need to pass the name uh, which is like if you are passing uh, billy games means so it will come into the constructor it will split billy alone this dot state dot first name means it will print only billy so this is how so next topic we are going to see is how to create a components so in react js everything is component so if in the web page uh, you need to create header and footer means header is one component footer is one component so that is how you need to create so basic structure so import react component from react render dom so everything i have imported so first component extends component render this dot props dot name i'm a first component i'm just closing so inside that render first component name user document dot get element content so user i'm a first component so that would be the output you will get so that is a stateless component that does not contain state so stateless functional components that is what i have shown you so this is stateless function component so what is that in many application the smart components that hold states it will render only the dumb component so the stateless functional component are much reusable will have a positive performance so there are two main characteristics so when render they receive objects with all the props and then you can pass it down so they must return only jsx to render with the two things 
and just importing uh, the react and you can also import props types so constant first component i'm just passing a props as a function so inside that function hello props name i'm a first component which means the user will come here arrow components may also have prop validation so that you need to use props dot string is required so this is the props validation so the how you have used arrow function right so props first component for the first component i have used so first component dot props types name props types dot string is required so this is a validation i have created for this arrow function in props types so this is how you need to use if you are using a prop types from the react component then you need to put the validation for that arrow function for the props so to use the first component in the other file it must be exposed through a export call so if for if you want to use this first component you need to export like this export default first component so these are stateless functional components so now we are going to see about stateful components in contrast to that we have a state object that can be updated with the set state method so for that you need to initialize a constructor before to set a state so this is my second component i am just extending so constructor super keyword is the first line of the constructor that we have all know so this dot state i am just using toggle true so this is uh, to bind when passing on click so this on click i'm just binding that method so in react whenever you have created some method you need to bind that so i'm just returning on click um so this is a definition for this on click so this dot set state so toggle initially i have made true so i'm just changing my state values inside the on click method so i'm just using this state method previous state would be like true initially true or false we don't know i'm just passing the props as well as inside the arrow so toggle not equal to previous uh, state dot toggle so i'm just changing the state so inside the uh, render i'm just returning on click this dot on click so if i click i will get the state of the toggle get changes so this dot props dot name i am a second component so this dot props dot name i will get from the first component which is a user hello user i am a state component and toggle this dot state dot toggle i will get when i click if it is a true i will get true if it false i will get false so this is how you need to use a stateful components from the by using a state and then you can also use a uh, props like this sorry extending a component with pure component instead of the component will automatically implement the should component of tail which is one of the life cycle that we will get uh, i will show you in the upcoming session so this keeps your application more performant by reducing unnecessary render so this is always called as a pure with some state and props in input so this is a proper example so next is we can see higher order components so uh, higher order is like a hierarchy we are going to see input react component from react sorry i am just extending component on click console dot log hello 
so this higher order component will takes another component as a parameter and then it will render it with additional props as well as so this is the meaning of this higher order component so inside render uh, some uh, composed components this is the component which we have created i'm just passing when on click it will get triggered so i am just a uh, higher order component or uh, used when you want to share some logic across several component or what so that at that point of time you can use this higher order component but mostly we won't use this we won't prefer this so next is a basic component i'm just going to show you through my html so this is html i have imported all the libraries whichever i want so what i have done so inside the script src i'm just uh, i'm just written my react in example.js inside my script i'm just importing in the html id is content so uh, with the help of that id i will get that but when i run this program i will not get output uh, this src will fail to load you cannot uh, import the react in some other file and then you cannot use the via script link in the html so the better practice is if you want please return right whatever the react you want to use inside the script itself then it will run but this program if you try running it will not run i will show you at the end of the difference between both the basic component in the separate file so the next would be nesting components so we can see how and all we can nest a component so lot of power of react js it is ability to allow nesting of components so you can see here i'm just i have taken two components here so where react require react so where create react class require create class so these are the two components i have got so uh, where comment list i'm just creating create class react create class i'm just rendering returning something okay so where comment form react create class and again i'm just creating render inside that function class name comment from hello i am comment from so what it is mentioning command list so this is command form this is command list the two things i have created so now i can uh, you can nest and refer to those component in definition of a different component so how i can show you i'm show you so i have created two components react and create react class i'm just creating a function div command box command so this is the command list so this is the command list which i am using so it will automatically render everything inside this and command form so the command form i am using so it will come so i will get output commands hello world i am from command list hello world i am from command form that is the output you will get so further nesting can also done in free way so this is one of the basic so the further also we can use the only thing is just you you need to put the component's name with the help of slash 
so this is the second component name with the help of slash so this is how you can nest a component so nesting without using children so you can see here the comment list so this style is where a compose b and b compose c so a compose b and b compose c so this is comment list is a sorry inside this comment list i have imported some of the component so a compose b and b compose c without children i'm just nested so for this props easy if you use uh, nesting without children means it can be easy and fast to separate ui and is easy to inject uh, props to down children based on the component so some of the good b and c are just presentational components means it should uh, c's rise uh, life cycle should be responsible of b and uh, disadvantages means less reusability and less visibility in composition architecture so that is the advantages and disadvantages of nesting without children so nesting with children we can see command box render function i'm just uh, nesting with children command list so this is the chil child and command form so what you understood a compose b and a tells b to compose c so more power to the parent components so comparing to that this is more powerful so advantages by using uh, with children means better component life cycle management architecture reusability so uh, what are the drawbacks b should accept compose something different than c and a should control the life cycle of b so disadvantages which is little expensive and flexibility power in child components so that is the drawback we have seen here so the next uh, b would render c using this dot props dot children and there is that that would not be the structure so the better way is like a should do that so you need to give all the power to the parent component so that is the way we can render so b may enrich the child components by giving the additional props but if b needs to do that then you would have a three as a better the third three, third one only the better option i am just show you nesting components first nesting without child b which means a will compose b b will compose c that is nesting without children so we have some drawback that so nesting using children means a is compose b and a will tells the b to compose c so this one this is the best to my point of view because more power is left to the parent component only so the third one only the better option which is like nesting with the child components so next is nesting using props how we can do that so command box uh, h1 command command list title this is the prop and command form so the prop i have created here which means a compose b b provides the option for a to pass something yeah the title i am just passing so props uh, what are the this is like more structured composition advantages is as a future validation is better composability so 
disadvantages is like just little expensive and flexibility and power in child components so um, what is a good thing we can uh, develop this nesting using props is so the special future compose something b only to render but in the third option which is like nesting using children that take making use of the public library so that is a good practice so the overall composable components clearly defined first is easier and faster something works but second and third should provide certain benefits in various cases just like nesting that is the nesting components so that is the better faster and easier to so props so props are way to pass information in the react component that we have already discussed sometimes it is referred as callbacks in jsx props are passed within the attribute syntax so like this so this is the attribute we are passing the syntax so inside the definition for my component user id will now be accessed from the props objects so the render function inside my component render inside my component so this dot props dot user id so it is like it will define all the props their types where they are applicable and their default value so it is uh, important to all the props you can also define at the bottom of the my component like this so props types my component this is a object react dot props dot object and then you need to put a validation for that user id title so react dot prop dot number user id is required title that should be the string so this is the validation i'm just putting uh, object title user id so i am just using my component dot default props same object title my default title which i have using so in this example clearly it is showing props some object that should be optional but the user id is required if you fail to provide user id to the component at the run time it will show you the value the props which we have required no that is not mentioned which is inside the render method we have done so this user id is very important object and title that are not uh, that is optional so it will give you warning so this warning is shown only the development version of the react library it has lot of warnings so using default props allow you to simplify like this title my default title or to console this dot props dot title so this is absolutely wrong so it is safeguard to use object array and function if you do not provide a default prop for the object then for sure it will throw an error if the prop is not passed so how to props pass a default props for a object so with some key you need to pass like this so this dot props this is the object with some key so this is a default not exactly with the same value you need to pass so some default thing you need to pass but if you pass till this dot props dot some object then it would be undefined so with some key you need to pass otherwise it will throw a error and then there the code will break so next to be component states which is like dynamic user interface so suppose we want to have a following behavior uh clicking it we want uh, we want to become a input box so we can modify a heading name so like that dynamic user interface so it's in the react it's so simple component state if states so i will explain i have react bootstrap element but the code which i have used is regular html so 
for that you need to import uh, you need to get the library of react bootstrap so button i'm just getting from react bootstrap form also i'm just getting from react bootstrap so group and form control everything from react bootstrap so i'm just creating a component command so initial state i'm just getting show false new title so i'm just writing a function for the submit button handle title so something you need to put here so uh, code to change the name in the input box and new title is empty so you need to put a validation for that if it is empty means what you need to do that i have written in handle title change so we need to update the string uh, currently by enter by user in the form so that i need to put in the set state because state i have mentioned the title you can see here so this order the state show and new title or state attribute so if something need to update i need to put that in state state the target value update i have written in the handle title change so with the help of that even i need to do that so e dot target value that will be the new title will, will come in set state so next is change your component show variable is used or not so this dot state dot show that also you need to put in set state so these two are state attribute so after that i need to render if it uh, state is shown means you need to put uh, the form and then you need to give this dot handle submit so then it will go to that submit and then it will submit and if you want to change the title this on handle title change will comes there you can change the title i am just closing everything is in if part so in the else what i am going to do i am just going to change the component itself this dot change component which i have written here right change component if the component is not shown means what i can do i am just putting default text i am just closing and returning so clickable title uh, i am just rendering my dom comment that was my component name i'm just rendering i'm just closing so this is how a uh, dynamic user interface which means i have a button react bootstrap button and then react bootstrap form so everything so i have made a stood state vari variable which is like show a new title and then i have a submit button for that form if that everything means submit means what needs to do i need to return inside this form this this is the sorry so this is the uh, method for that so next is handle title change so if you want to change the title of the form what you needs to know so next is so both i have written if there is if you change this title means how it will reflect i need to write set state so same for if the particular component is shown or not means what you need to do so if it is shown means it will uh, change the title it will submit the form in the else part i have written if my component is not shown means it will provide the default text and finally i am rendering my dom my dom which component i need to render uh, comment so i am just rendering so this is how the dynamic user of components so the main part is like clickable title and state variable show so form element or button element allow using nesting component so we can add the title on the clickable title element so based on the this dot shade dot show it displays the corresponding element so next is variation of stateless function component 
so which is like we don't have state so these are my uh, array constant language language dot props type i have a message i'm just validating that message so this should be the string so how you can validate is react dot props dot string is required i'm just validating my message so if there are more than one line you need to notice the round brackets are optional here and then it is like better re uh, readability of code so constant language list again i'm just using it in a map because this is the array thing so i'm just using it in a map i'm just iterating each and every values with the arrow function and also i'm just validating my array react dot props dot array is required so this is main thing you need to validate whatever data types you have using inside the react component with the help of this prop types so for instance some data manipulators needs to be done and otherwise uh, it will return nothing so i'm just using the language selection so it will select the language first thing i'm just making in a map function if it is up perfect case it will select the formatted language from that array and then inside the field set it will display everything so for that language selection also i'm just putting validation i'm just rendering my dom uh, language selection is my dom with the help of app so this is how uh without a state i'm just uh, with a pure array with a pure map function i'm just passing each and every values from my array with the help of a map function and uh, it's, it's like basic javascript right so how you will retrieve values from the arrays this but here we are using the props type to validate that everything and then you need to use the component wherever you want so next is set state pitfalls so uh, which is like when you are using the set state you might uh, just a call back request right so uh, this is my class component set state i am just using user so this component did mount and all which is one of the life cycle method in react js i will show you in the maybe in the next or upcoming sessions but here i have used for this program so this is like it will render first so before dom this component did mount will render so that is the concept of this component did mount so i'm just fetching the data from the user so for this user uh, through the api which means from the back end i am just getting the data and inside that i am just with the help of this state set state method i am just changing that and then i am the rendering so the problem here is if the callback is called after the component then the function will not get changed that is the problem if you are using a set state inside your uh, render or something and before that itself you have you have made the component did mount then there is no use because first this will call so after that you then you are uh, making set statement it will not reflect so that is the drawback that is why i have explained you so whenever this case you should be careful to ensure that set state is cancelable so the below example i will show you uh, i am just making that as a null which is like cancelable inside that component i will unmount i am just cancelling the callback request so i am just making abort the status for means i need to abort that after that i can make component did mount after that i can make a uh, api to get and change everything so it will save the asynchronous method in the state and component will uh, mount uh, will unmount will clean up i will explain you what is component will unmount and did mount in detail in the upcoming session 
So, uh, in the example, I'm just creating a sage stutter function that accepts object as an argument and prevents this set state when the function cancel, it will get cancel. So state setter where cancel false. I'm just returning cancel function canceled. So the set state I'm just passing again. If canceled now, it will get into the new state. So the same thing inside the component. Uh, so I'm just making the state setter and then after that I'm just making the state component. So unmount it will cancel, did mount it will fetch. The same concept before we have seen. So uh, if you are something you're getting a data from the back end in that you are changing the state variable and then if you're calling that in component did mount mean it is totally waste so if you're doing like that means first you need to cancel the state request with the help of component and will mount so these two method explanation or life cycle i will show you in the upcoming session and after that i will execute this example that would be more clear for you so this is the summary of today's session. We have seen what is props, states, how you can create a component, what are the different types of nesting components, which is better, how to use a dynamic user interface and stateless function components. So if you have any queries, please write to info at uplets.com. So now we can enter into a practical demo. For that, I will share my screen. so that you can see so hope you you can see my screen so yeah so this is my first i will open with the uh, notepad plus plus so i already have shown you right so this is like jsx uh this is like jsx without JSX, the React component. So see how react.create component document.get element ID. So this is without JSX. So second example, so, so yeah, first we can run this. So I am getting hello world. So this is without JSX. The second example with JSX I am just making, which is like with JSX in the sense, uh, this is like, so I am just creating a react element like this. Instead of, instead of like this, I'm just creating a react element like this. So both will give you the same output. The thing is with and without JSX. So with JSX would be more preferable in react. So the next thing is already I have shown you. I'm just making the script tag inside a react component. So I have a script folder inside that I have made the react component. If you try to run that, it will not. So one minute, I will just show you. I will, I will save and then I'll try to run. It will not give you the output. Oh, see, file not form. So, so this is like uh, you cannot uh, uh, like normal JS, you cannot uh, make that inside the script folder and then like that you cannot run and then you can import this. It will, it won't work in React JS. If you want, you need to give it inside the div like this and then you can run. So that should be fine. So, okay. 
so this is all about today's session if you have any queries in my session please write to info at uplets.com so in this session i need to show you only two examples is pending in my second session uh, that i will explain you after i am just explaining the life cycle methods in uh, react js so hope the session is useful for you if you have any queries please write to info at uplets.com see you all on my next session thank you